Let's bring in Jonathan Turley now, constitutional law attorney, law professor, and Fox News contributor. Let's pick up, Jonathan, where we just left off with Shannon. I, of course, want to pick your brain on the legal aspects of this ruling. But before we get there, just a moment to talk about the, the sort of legal and political gambit the president took in this instance. We are now going to see millions of current and former higher education students left now in the lurch, people who are maybe planning on some or all of their loans being relieved who just now found out that's not going to happen. Well, that's right. It'll be interesting whether these students uh, view themselves as chumps or victims, uh, because uh, the president never had this authority. Uh, he, they were given an assurance that he had no right to give, because he has to go to Congress in our constitutional system to get this type of money. And he knew he couldn't get it because there are a lot of people that object to this type of loan forgiveness. A lot of people decided to become plumbers or carpenters. They decided to invest in equipment. Uh, they're not getting this type of assistance. And the president knew that. And so he used this very short law, it's only a few pages long, designed to protect people that were going uh, to fight our wars and to relieve them of the duty to pay tuition. Um, it was a rather cynical use of this law, in my view, because it uh, it never it was plausible that Congress ever had this intent uh, behind the law. That's what the court found today. And the leading witness for the majority was former Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And they quote her at length and say, of course a president can't do this. The president himself acknowledged he couldn't do it. That's what makes this all rather cynical, uh, that the, these students were played in this way. And the president's going to have to go back to Congress and do it the way the Constitution requires. But this is just the latest example of that type of cynical overreach. Uh, he did this with the eviction moratorium. He was told by lots of experts, including people within the White House, you don't have authority for this. The CDC can't issue this order. He did it anyway, and it was found to be unconstitutional. Uh, while you were speaking, Jonathan, um, the Supreme Court has officially gone into recess for the summer. That just happened mm -hmm. right now. Chief Justice Don Roberts declared that quite an active season. Um, to pick up on where you just left off, though, why do you think that despite legal constitutional realities, the Biden team decided to go down this route anyway. Because it made for good politics. I think what they're counting on is that the students will feel like the court took money out of their pockets, even though he didn't have this money. Uh, this was a invalid IOU that they couldn't possibly have cashed. Uh, but I think what they're banking on is that they will feel aggrieved that somehow conservative justices denied them thousands of dollars. And of course, that's not true. But it comes at a cost. You know, this president has racked up a rather impressive array of losses in the court. Some of those losses, I think, were more politically than legally uh, motivated. But they come at a cost to his office. Each of these losses creates precedent for the future. This is major precedent. Uh, you know, here the court is saying we're not going to let you rely on laws, creative interpretations of laws of this kind. There were a host of law professors supporting this. I was rather surprised. Mm. Uh, but the court said there's no evidence in this law that there was any intent to allow you to do this. But there was ample evidence of why he wanted to do it. He right. did not want to go to Congress. Well, and also from the other side, on the left, the thinking, the rationale behind driving this push was this is going to give the poorest American students a leg up in the workforce. This is going to free them from some of the very onerous debt that makes doing other things as an adult difficult, like decide, you know, buying a house, raising children, things that cost a lot of money. Um, what do you say to those people now? Well, I think that what's going to happen now is that the administration will go to Congress and try to see if there's a way uh, to lessen the burden uh, for these students. They did get sold on this one. I mean, they, uh, it was not their fault that a president said that he had authority to do this. 
uh, and Congress may feel like they have some obligation to help relieve uh, uh, some of this mess that was created by the, the president. Uh, but he's going to have to negotiate. That's the way it works in our system. Otherwise, you become a government onto yourself. And what was astonishing about all of this were all the legal experts and members of Congress that were applauding the president for circumventing Congress. Hmm. You know, there's a high cost to that, and it's not money for loan forgiveness. It is taking a system offline that allows a president to become a government onto himself. Take a look at this, just in now from former vice president and current presidential candidate Mike Pence. He's reacting to this ruling. He says, quote, I am pleased that the court struck down the radical left's effort to use the money of taxpayers who played by the rules and repaid their debts in order to cancel the debt of bankers and lawyers in New York, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. Is that really a fair appraisal of what happened today? Do you see it that way? Do you see the policy for all its... Uh, legal um, weak points being something that really just helped Americans who already have great advantage in society? Well, you know, some of these people who went to college do have a greater advantage over others. Uh, some of them are coming are from uh, families that are in need. Uh, and it's, it's cruel all around uh, to make a promise that you had no constitutional authority to make. Uh, and so there was a lot of concern about who this was really helping. But I think the main concern we have to keep in mind is, is not whether loan forgiveness has valid arguments or rationales. In, in a Madisonian democracy, it's often more important how we do something than what we do. Right. Because how we do it is the protection against tyranny. It's against authoritarianism. And Madison created what many may view as a maddening system. You have to compromise. You have to get things through the legislative process. A lot of presidents have chafed at that in history. But it was surprising to see Biden become uh, such a foe to separation of powers. He cut his teeth in Congress. Uh, and as soon as he became president, he became openly antagonistic towards that, that system of constitutional process. And as I just talked about with Shannon, none of these factors mattered to the justices looking at the, or were supposed to matter to the justices looking at the, this case before them. They were not concerned with whether this was a great policy or a terrible policy, who it helped, who it hurt. They were concerned with the constitutionality of the underlying legal rationale put forward by the White House. We just got this in, too, Jonathan, um, before I get your reaction to that. Uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, pretty scathing reaction to this. He says, this disappointing and cruel ruling shows the callousness of the mega Republican controlled Supreme Court. The hypocrisy is clear. As justices accept lavish six figure gifts, they don't dare to help Americans saddled with student loan debt, instead, siding with the powerful, big moneyed interests. It's a pretty low blow there yeah. for Schumer. Well, it's, it's really breathtaking because you have the Senate Majority Leader uh, who is irate that the president will have to come to Congress to get approval to spend hundreds of millions of dollars. And in some ways, this would mystify Madison. Madison always believed that no matter what party you're a member of, that it, Congress would protect jealously its own authority. Uh, he never saw the likes of this Congress. I mean, you have a Senate Majority Leader saying, how dare you? Uh, say that we have to approve this type of, of loan. And I think that in the end, there's going to be a lot of anger like that directed towards the court. I thought it was actually interesting to see uh, Chief Justice Roberts' statement at the end of the opinion, where he says, lots of critics will tell you that this is uh, political, but you're harming the court. That's extremely rare for the Chief Justice. He's 